Hello everyone, Cal Bunger here, and welcome to another edition of What We Know About Framemakers. Today, we are going to be talking about assists. And in general, we're going to be talking about which assists are in the game, what they do, and then we're going to be talking about some miscellaneous information about assists as well. Apologies for my voice, it's going to sound a little bit different. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm under the weather just yet, but my throat is just a little bit scratchy and I hope that's the extent of it. So yeah, anyway, let's get straight into it. The confirmed assists for Framemaker so far are every single playable character, that is right. So, Commander Video, Weltaro, Fish Bungeon, The Watcher, Octodad, and Orcane all have assist moves that you can use and uh, you can pick them as assists. You can also currently use the same assist as the character you are playing as, but that could change. Now let's get into the actual unique assist, which starts with Tankman from the Newgrounds series Tankman. He shoots a powerful and quick bullet in a 40 degree angle. Next is Ain from Renane. She does a four hit combo that comes out on frame one is meant to be a combo starter or an ender. Pizza from Chicory, a colorful tail. They summon a paintbrush that moves forward in front of them along the ground and any opponent who touches the paint gets popped upwards. The paint covers as long as it possibly can. It will go until the end of the stage so you could activate this from one side of the stage and it will reach the entire other side of the stage which is kind of crazy <laughs> honestly. The Bard from Wonder Song is next. He puts the song wheel around the summoner for a brief period of time and it will slightly push opponents who touch it. Which doesn't sound like a big deal, but for offstage stuff or for getting rid of people in general who are trying to pressure you, it could help a lot. Next is Peppino from Pizza Tower, my boy. He dashes forward and if he gets near an opponent, he grabs them and uppercuts them upwards. It is a true grab, so it will hit shielding opponents. Next is Joseph from Machinerium. Joseph extends his body upwards for a long reaching vertical attack. There is a sweet spot at the top of his head that is very powerful. Next is Diogenes, Diogenes, I don't know, from getting over it with Bennett Foddy. He plants his hammer to the ground then propels himself forward and continues to do so until he goes off stage. The hammer plant can lead into the pot attack which is high and not back. Next is Nicandrios from Apotheon. Nicandrios stabs forward then cuts upwards. This can start combos and it also looks like it hits on frame 1. Next is Rockman from FTL Faster Than Light. He walks forward slowly and any opponent in front of it gets hit with a devastating overhead strike. Then there's Leah from Crosscode. She fires a series of ricocheting balls at a downward angle. She fires at least two projectiles, but it's probably going to be more than that. Then there's Star Drop from Indie Pogo. We do not know what he does. <laughs> then there's Fancy Pants Man from Fancy Pants Adventures. He leaps forward and does a powerful overhead swipe with his pencil. Next is the kid from I Want to Be the Guy. The kid walks under a delicious fruit. The apple will fall downward slowly, and if the opponent touches it, they go flying. It is one of the strongest in terms of knockback. Next is Birthday from King of the Hat. He throws his hat forward in an arc. It can start combos. It also bounces off of opponents, and it might be able to bounce from opponent to opponent, which could be really interesting. Next is Rhythm Doctor from Rhythm Doctor. He spikes the opponent after 7 seconds, unless they manage to dodge the attack. Next is Ape from Ape Out. He used to zip forward and push opponents, but Team Frey recently said that they are going to redo his assist to do something more unique. And we don't know what that is yet. Next is Captain Viridian from VVVVVV. He flips your gravity and sends you upwards. This can help with recoveries or combos. Then there's Super Hexagon from Super Hexagon. Super Hexagon traps and stuns the opponent and forces them to play a miniature version of Super Hexagon. We do not know what happens when you beat the little miniature version of Super Hexagon. We don't know if you're freed from there, and we don't know what happens if you fail the game either. Next is Lady Luck from Dicey Dungeons. She throws out six dice blocks that bounce along the ground, and each of them inflict a special status effect. 
This is actually the most information that we have gotten about status effects, as this confirms that there's going to be at least six of them in the game. The color of the dice might indicate which status effects there are too. The one we know for sure is that the green one is poison thanks to the silent, who we'll talk about in a second. The other colors are purple, yellow, gray, blue, and red. What do you think these status effects could be? Let me know in the comments below. Let's talk about the silent next from Slate Aspire. She stabs forward and if the opponent is hit they receive the poison status effect. This effect does damage over time. The poison is on a timer which you can see just below your character I would say. It kind of just sticks on to them. And the timer resets as long as you hit the opponent so that's very interesting. Next is the shopkeeper from Downwell. We have no idea what he does. And finally the latest assist to be announced for Frame Makers was Nico from One Shot and he produces a circular light field around himself and if the summoner is within it they get a boost in damage not back in speed. Hey this is a post edit because I did forget about one assist and I don't know how I did it's Crag from Rivals of Aether. He makes the rock pillar is up B from Rivals of Aether and you can basically from there use that for combos you can use that for recoveries and stuff like that it's a very versatile assist. Now let's talk about how assists are used in general. You use an assist by filling the assist meter to full. You fill your assist meter by attacking opponents. You will never gain meter from getting hit, so that's nice. Assists might act differently in the air depending on which one you are using, so that's interesting too. Players will be able to choose the same assist, so you know in a 1v1 both people can have Peppino or whatever, or in a 4v4 everybody can have Joseph if they want. Palace swaps for assists are being considered. That is pretty cool. They in general won't pick a character to be an assist if they don't think that they wouldn't do something unique from the rest. And finally, assists can become playable characters in the future, which is really really cool. I'm glad that they are opening up the possibility and that these things are not just assist trophies, you know? Because honestly, when I saw Characters like Peppino and Fancy Pants Man in there as assists, I was like, oh man, I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. So hopefully one day we can get one of those characters as playable. But that is all I have for you guys. That's everything you need to know about every single assist that has been revealed. I believe there are still a couple more assists left to be revealed before tester builds, or they just might not reveal them at all, who knows. Uh, honestly, I think they might just be worrying about getting the game into our hands and they might leave some surprises for us for the tester build, so we'll see. But uh, as soon as an assist does get revealed or any news for this game gets revealed, subscribe here. You'll get it here. And uh, along with getting more videos about frame makers this month, including more informational videos like this as well as Rate Their Chances videos. So yeah. I'll see you guys on the next edition of this series. Bye.